Thanks for joining us and learning about all the exciting technology that John Deere and CNB have to offer between the hard iron and the technology that's available. Becoming a dealer of choice is not an easy task, but we're definitely committed to it, both from training our employees, working with our customers, and doing agronomic and production plots like we're standing in here today. We look forward to sharing this information with you and helping you grow your operation into the future. With CMB Operations, I'm Nate Jansen. And I'm Jeff Buick, committed to being your dealer of choice. Hi, I'm Wayne Will. I'm a support specialist out of the CNB Support Center in Pipestone, Minnesota. Today we're going to go over the Seedstar 4 HP software and some of its functionality. All right, so here we are in the 8R410RX uh, tractor, and we're going to go over some of the Seedstar 4 functionality and setup. So when you start out, uh, every new DB60 or any planner with Seedstar 4 is going to have a preset set of run pages that comes up with the controller when you plug it into the tractor. So this is our planner overview page here. We're gonna, we're gonna be in this page here for the remainder of this session here. So everything you're gonna need to set this planner up um, is gonna be within this page here. So you've got um, things to monitor here. Uh, and everything here is a button that you can push to get more information behind it. So every module has its own piece of information. Um, this one I just clicked on is our population here. Uh, that'll bring you to the, each row individually. You can zoom in. The major difference between Seedstar 3 and 4 is that you do have the zoom functionality on uh, each row unit to get that information for population. Uh, it'll give you the highs and the lows of each row. Uh, it'll give you the average as well uh, with this bar graph, but you can zoom in to each individual row as well. And going back in here, you've got to pop up your modules here. So we've got gauge wheels, uh, row cleaners, singulation, seed spacing, and closing wheels here. So uh, going into our gauge wheels, this is going to give you each row by row breakdown as well. And we've got the zoom functionality with this is same as the population, uh, give you the downforce margin, uh, to give you ground contact and ride quality here. Um, that's where you find this information. It'll give you the, the high row, which row is the highest, which row is the lowest, and then you can do a specific row here. You can search that as well. Going back to our main modules, we've got row cleaners here. There's three presets on these, um, so we can set, uh, we can lift them up out of the ground, uh, making sure that those are up. If you don't want to use row cleaners, you can put them down. You have three separate different set pressures on our pneumatic um, easy adjust row cleaners here. And we do have the ability to break uh, those up into wings and center pressures, um, or you can have them put together uh, as just one set pressure. Going back to our main modules here, go to our singulation. That'll give us a bar graph of how well our uh, meters are singulating every row. Again, we have that zoom functionality here to get that row by row breakdown there. Going back to our main modules, we've got seed spacing. The same as before, we've got the zoom functionality. And closing wheels again. So again, closing wheels, we've got two groups. We've got wings and we've got center sections. Um, set different pressures on those so that you get the optimal amount of closing force there. And going back to our main modules here, we've got this tools button. This is where you go to set up everything when you first go to the field here. So we'll go ahead into this tools button. We've got our seed and alarm setup. We'll go into seed and alarm setup. This is where you set up your seed discs or seed bowls for this matter. We've got on the exact Emerge Planner here. So right now we've got our soybean bowls in. We go to set up our product alarms. This is where you set up your product high or product low uh, population warnings or your singulation low or seed spacing uh, warnings. Going into our gauge wheels here, this is where you can set your target margins. Um, it'll set a alarm for your high margin or your low margin if you've got too high or too low. Uh, if you've got too low or too high of ground contact, it'll warn you as well. Um, it'll also warn you if you've got less than 70% the way it's set up for uh, ride quality right now. Now moving into the planter setup itself here. That's just a shortcut key to the equipment uh, setup uh, that you would find in the setup icon in the bottom left of the main home screen as well. Tractor's going to be defaulted in there because this is an integrated armrest display. We've got the DB60 machine profile as well here. You can go in there, it's just a shortcut to verify your offsets and connection type. 
dimensions, rows, um, everything you need for that uh, documentation to be set up correctly there. Also, this is where you would set up your implement receiver uh, offsets for your auto track implement guidance, your auto track um, auto path as well. And as well, we do have set up for our exact rate fertilizer here as well. Moving on to the frame control application here. This is where we get into this. And we can get, um, we get a warning every time we go into frame control. It just uh, tells us to make sure our SCV levers are all in neutral. That way we don't move the planter when we go in here by accident here. So we'll just accept that. It defaults to the plant side. So if you're folded up, you're going to want to start in transport to unfold it. And before you can do easy fold, so this planter is set up with easy fold or manual control. The easy fold, you have to assign your SCVs to each uh, SCV location. So SCV1, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make sure our SCVs are set to, uh, we wanna do automated SCV control, automated SCV control for frame and vacuum here. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And we're gonna go to edit settings here. And we've got SCV1 for frame height, SCV2 for marker drawbar. We do SCV3 for vacuum one, SCV4 for vacuum two. And it is important to make sure you do have these SCVs assigned before you do easy fold, otherwise you will not have the easy fold functionality. That is also the same for the auto track turn automation. You do have to have the SCVs assigned before you will be able to do that function as well. Okay, moving on here, we'll go ahead and hit save to make sure that saves. We're going to have to do a system restart. We'll go ahead and not do that right now since it's already set up. We'll just go ahead and cancel out of this. And once your easy fold SCVs are assigned, you can go ahead and just hit start easy fold and then you would hold the SCV1 uh, down or up depending on if you're unfolding or folding that uh, planter up. Easy fold height settings here. This is where we go to set our height settings. So with our hitch, you want to tell it when you're folding it up, you want that transport height to be 100% uh, all the way up. And when you're folding, you want it to stop at 16% when it starts to unfold the wings there. And then at plant, you want the hitch to be at 0%. So uh, you can adjust these settings if they're not exactly where you need them to be in the easy fold process. Next out of that. Once we've got our planter unfolded and ready to go in the field, we'll go ahead and go in back to the plant side and we'll accept this SCV warning again. This is where you have the ability to turn on or off your markers and we can do the auto marker uh, selection as well if you have the auto marker feature. And this is where you go in to turn on your frame weight distribution as well. Uh, we do not have the ability to adjust frame weight distribution from the cab. That is a um, gauge underneath the CCS tanks that you use and there's a valve to adjust the pressure for the wing downforce. Um, that is preset from the factory so we don't normally uh, adjust that um, in the field. Moving on in our planter tools we've got our planter runoff procedures. So pre-season you're gonna go out and test all your meters out with your electric drive planter. Uh, this is where we can go in here we can go either do it with the meter by row or the whole planter itself. Um, this is where you'd go in to do your mobile row unit runoff here as well. Um, you can do that through this page here. Um, you can do it from the cab. You can set it up and run it from the cab by row. You can tell it the target population. You can tell it the speed that you would do uh, for the simulation. And then you can go ahead and hit start and it would run through that process there. Keep in mind, to do that process, you do have to have the PTO engaged and the uh, EPG turned on as well. Moving on into the planner diagnostics and calibrations. That just brings us into this portion here. So if you're having any issues with your planner system, you can go in and do a little bit of diagnosing uh, on the fly here.
and Diagnostic Center is our last quick link in our planner tools ta tab. So this just brings you to the regular Diagnostic Center and uh, with that quick uh, link there. At the bottom of this planner tools here, we do have the fast start menu here. And you can enable fast start from here uh, as well. So this was the quick overview of the planter tools quick links tab. This is where you go in to adjust anything that you need to adjust on the planner and set up. CB Operations wants to make the 2021 harvest your best one yet. To do so, we encourage you to take advantage of our preseason fall startup packages. These packages provide labor rate savings for those operations who plan ahead on their farm equipment setup and operator training. Because of the part shortage we are facing this year, we also encourage you to book your fall equipment inspections early so we have the best opportunity to meet your repair parts needs. Your local CMB service manager has many discounted inspection offers available on a wide range of equipment, including 10% saving on all CMB installed parts. CMB encourages you to proactively check out these and all other aftermarket specials at www.deerequipment.com. Okay, moving inside the, the meter itself, behind the seed bowl here, we've got our, our brushes in here we need to inspect and make sure there's no missing bristles. For soybeans here, we've got this set up for soybeans right now. We're gonna make sure our doubles eliminator is pulled all the way in. So we pull these tabs in and we push that all the way down. Make sure our fingers are still good on our doubles eliminator. Uh, make sure there's no pieces missing. Uh, we want to be able to eliminate all the doubles in there so that we don't have uh, our population deviation there. Uh, we want to make sure we've got our smooth uh, seed strip in here so there's not very much agitation required for soybeans since they're smooth seeds. So we'll uh, just visually inspect here. All right, moving on to the seed guide here. We want to make sure our seed guide isn't worn out from our brush belt. This is where the seed actually gets pushed into the brush belt itself, so it's delivered to the soil. Uh, we want to make sure that's not worn out, and these are replaceable through parts here. Another thing to watch for on our seed meter housing itself here is that we've got our ceramic wear pads on here. As you can see, maybe there's, there's a dot in these ceramic wear pads. Once the dot disappears completely from that seed bowl, uh, rubbing against it, that means you need to replace these uh, wear strips here. All right, so that's about all there is for the uh, meter housing itself here. We're going to set that aside. And moving into the more of the row unit itself here, we're going to remove the plastic housing of covering up our brush belt and our m motors here. Set that to the side. We've got our brush belt cartridge. We're going to loosen up the tension, uh, the depth on our uh, gauge wheels here so we can remove the brush belt. We're going to go ahead and pop this out and you're going to want to make sure you unplug your uh, seed sensor here before you remove the brush belt entirely. So we've got a Deutsch connector there. Let's get it out. All right. Oops. I want to clean it off a little bit here. All right. <clears throat> so this is our brush belt cartridge here. Uh, we've got our tensioner here. We've got the arrow pointing down. That means we've got it tensioned. We're going to go ahead and release the tension on our brush belt. There we go. We've got the tension released. Now we're going to take the cover off. We've got clips on the outside here. We can just unclip the cover here. And then the cover comes off of the brush belt cartridge. And you can set that off to the side here. And we'll make sure that our brush belt, one more cover in the bottom here. We'll go ahead and set that to the side as well. And we can release the tension on our brush belt. We can take it out or we can replace it if we need to. Uh, we can visually inspect it, make sure the bristles are okay. Uh, make sure the backing of your belt is not coming apart. Also make sure your bearings are free. Uh, they spin freely here and they don't make any noise when you spin them. Uh, you can take your your gear drive here for your brush belt drive and just spin it and make sure it spins freely and doesn't make any noise. And then moving into the seed sensor itself here on the side that we unplugged earlier, we can go ahead and remove this piece here and just in inspect the lens, make sure it's not cracked or broken or scratched. The lens cover itself is replaceable, uh, not the lens itself, but um, just so you don't have to replace the whole seed sensor uh, when you are doing your inspections here. So once you've verified that your seed sensor is okay, 
We'll go ahead and slide this back into the cover here. And make sure your springs, your tensioner here is free of debris when you go to tighten it back up. So we'll go ahead and tension our belts back up with our tensioner on the back side here. Another thing to check for here, we've got our brush belt conditioner on the back here. We've got a wire. We want to make sure that this is not worn out. If this starts to wear out too much, it can get sharpened from the brush belt passing by it too many times, and it can actually shave your brush belt down faster than it should. So uh, just keep an eye on that when you're doing your post or pre-season checklist as well. So another thing to note when you're done planting in the spring, make sure you release the tension on your brush belts so that they're not tensioned throughout the entire year. That'll give you a little bit longer wear life on your brush belts. Uh, it is highly recommended to remove them completely uh, for the season and place them on a PVC pipe, uh, similar in size to this top uh, drive shaft here. But at the very least, just loosen up the tension on your uh, brush belts. So, And that right there is the uh, meter brush belt here. Moving on from the brush belt, we've got our uh, meter drive electric motor here, and we've got our brush belt drive motor here. Uh, the beauty of the Exact Emerge or the electric drive planters itself is that everything is swappable. So Swapnostics is your best friend here. We'll go ahead and you can replace the uh, row unit controllers with different ones along the planter if you're having issues with software or anything uh, along the row unit controller itself. You can swap these out. You can also swap the motors out if you're having any issues with uh, drive populations or anything. You can see if the issue will follow uh, while you're doing that. But uh, Swap Gnostics is a really uh, key benefit of the electric drive planting systems. All right, so we covered the row unit anatomy of the Exact Emerge row unit, and we went over some of the software in the cab for the Seedstar 4HP. And uh, my name is Wayne Will with the CNB Support Center. Thank you for watching. CNB Operations wants you to go to the field with confidence on your next pass. For many years, John Deere has allowed for documentation of many different passes. Over those years, it has been very easy to collect an abundance of data and abundance of information. We will work to clean up information pertaining to guidance lines, client farm field information, boundaries, autopath, and more. By doing this, it creates an accurate reporting and setup information for your John Deere Green Star and competitive displays. Ask about our customer loyalty program when you sign up for this service. For more information, visit us in the store or online at DeerEquipment.com. Hello, I'm Paul Lawaji, Precision Ag Consultant. I work with the Tracy, Slayton, and Worthington, Minnesota stores for CNB Operations. Today, I'll be going over AutoPath. AutoPath is the ability of a Gen 4 display to generate a line based on a previous pass. The previous pass can be an application pass, or a planting pass, or a pass that is set up as a road application. I, I would like to go over setting up AutoPath in a setup file from a previous application. If we planted with it with a particular planter or we did an application pass, we have the ability to bring the AutoPath lines into our next operation based off that previous pass. So in the Gen 4 display, it, it will record the AutoPath line, but you don't see it in the display, but it'll, it'll record them and it sends it to the operation center. In the operation center, we do a setup file. And in that setup file, the recorded auto path lines are stored and we, we will send, send them to the next application. So in the operation center, we go to our, our organization. The first thing we have to do is to make sure that auto path is turned on. So if we go to CNB operations, is what we're using today, we go into the, the gear on the right hand side next to the name. So if we select that gear, and we go into our settings, on the left hand side and then if, if we scroll down to the bottom you'll see AutoPath. AutoPath is turned on on this application. Let's hit edit and you'll have the ability to turn AutoPath on or off. So in order to use AutoPath we have to make sure that our operation center AutoPath is turned on. Okay so we make sure it's on and we'll hit save. Okay and we'll X out of this. And from here, let's go to our setup. 
and go to Setup File Creator. Once we're in Setup File Creator, we need to um, pick our select our display type, and we're going to be using the 4600 Command Center, so we'll pick a um, 4600 display, and we'll uh, we have to name the file, so we're going to name it Test Plot 2021, and then we'll hit Start. And you can see we, we show our fields here, and um, we'll select the field east of building because that's where the, the field that we have on AutoPath line. So if you scroll down, you will see the application that we had. Okay, so we, we applied urea um, back in January. Um, but up on the top, you can see there's a, our guidance line tracks we can select. We also have AutoPath. So we have to select in that AutoPath box we have to select our app, the, the previous application that we want to use. So in this case, we want to use the most recent application. Okay, now we'll go to next and go into our equipment, finish our setup file. Okay, we're going to select all of our machines, all of our tractors and combines, and we'll click on implement. We'll select all our implements. We'll go to products, go to next. We'll select all of our products and we have no tank mixes in our file so uh, we won't select any but we'll, uh, the next, we'll hit next again. We have no operators, we'll hit next again and then we'll get into summary. And in summary, as you can see, we have an auto path line. So that auto path line has been generated for the entire field. And we'll go ahead and hit create file and that file will then be either a USB stick or we'll uh, send it um, wirelessly with our, uh, our MTGs in the machines. The requirements to use AutoPath on a machine <clears throat> is the machine requires an implement receiver um, based on the bar of the machine so it can locate uh, where the row is applied. It also requires a Gen 4 display to generate or make the, the AutoPath lines and it's a 4640 or a version 2 4600 command center display is required to use the lines. The benefit of AutoPath is the ability to have a guidance line based off of an application or a planting roll. That planting roll then, then is, is mapped not where the tractor guidance line is. So it maps the line where the planter roll went, not where the tractor was going for a guidance line. And your next pass, whether it be for a cultivating pass or a spraying pass, then the next machine follows the row so you get a more accurate guidance line based off the actual location of the row. Thank you for watching today. I'm Paul Lawaji with CMB Operations, your John Deere dealer of choice. Hi, it's Chris again with CNB. This time we'll be discussing the plan portion of the John Deere Operations Center. So under plan, we have the Agran Prescription Creator, Crop Planner, Maintenance, and Work Planner. The main thing I'm going to be going over today is the Agrian Prescription Creator in the Operations Center. So I select Agrian Prescription Creator, and now I'm able to select whether I want an application or seeding variable rate prescription, or we wanted to do a tillage one. I'm going to be doing a variable rate pres seeding prescription for the uh, support center. I'm going to be doing it for the ISU client, the South Farm, North Bluff. And then we select our field boundary, which it auto-populated my active boundary. If I wanted to include my interior boundaries, I could do that. Otherwise, we can just leave it as the out outer one. Uh, we can choose then our prescription source. If you've already got a prescription that you have loaded into the operation center and you assigned it in the operation center map page, we can go in here and do from an existing prescription. If I select that existing prescription, I can then select which prescription we're wanting to use. Let's say I used 5356 and I liked it, but I wanted to change a little something about it. I can select that and then hit next. Now it's going to be bringing in that prescription that we had used in the past. We can see what our population ranges are 
And if we wanted to just combine a couple different zones, we can do, do this manually edit zones, or up here, we can select this area. And <clears throat> let's say I wanted to merge this number one with number two. Those two zones were so close together that maybe we didn't wanna have two different populations for those. I can select this merge selected fields and it will automatically merge those two once I hit OK to have that same one. We can also see there our total amount here. If we wanted to change a variety or add a variety, we can do that through here. If we wanted to distribute evenly across that, we can say that we wanted to start at 26,000 and end at 36,000. We can distribute that evenly. Everything's going to be replaced that's currently in there. And now we have changed all of those zones populations that we're going to be putting in there. So now that we've done that, we can hit save. We can save and close. And it will redirect us back to our files page, which I will be covering in a little bit. But we can see that now we've got that prescription here and we can hit that and we can send that to our equipment. Yeah. So that is pretty well it for the Agrium Prescription Creator. Thanks again for watching. My name is Chris Seifert with CNB Operations, committed to being your John Deere dealer of choice.